from Louisville to have a few. You know, Brad's got three. He's got up, you know, one up me every time. <laughs> he just drove behind the golf cart. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, you know, it's just a blessing to be here. We, you know, we have a smaller stable. We only have thirty something, forty horses. So uh, it's a lot harder to get here, you know, and much less trying to get here every year is something we've been trying to do. And just to have two in, it's really, really hard. So uh, we're just blessed to be here and have to enjoy it. How, how did you end up back here to begin with? And, and was this kind of the ultimate goal? Oh, that's a long story. But my father was a jockey. Uh, he won the Oaks here in 73 on a filly named Bag of Tunes. So uh, I grew up on the backside, you know, he died when I was a kid. And then uh, stepdad worked at the track and I just came here 12 years old and started working. Uh, I think I walked hots for her grandfather, uh, Blackie Huffman. Art Fisher was the assistant. That might have been one of my first hot walking jobs. I might have been 12, Pat with Huffman. And I think Ben was in, he wasn't there. He was uh, in school still. He wasn't on the backside working as much the first year, but he came later. So we all worked on the backside. You know, back then uh, everybody had summer jobs. So uh, yeah, just been here. I've kind of grew up here. And then started traveling when I was young, did a lot, you know, went to Louisiana a lot, you know, and then ended up going to New York with Nick Zito and kind of just stayed up in New York quite a bit for years, and uh, that's how we ended up there. Is this race kind of the ultimate goal for you? Well, I think it is for every horse trainer. I mean, I'd like to win the Oaks because my father won it, but uh, it's the Derby. It's every trainer's ultimate goal, I think. Two society men questions. Uh, talk about you sold your piece in him to a client. Dean Reeves, just comment on that. And then also the decision, Frankie Dettorio ride the horse in the Derby. Well, you know, uh, Dean's one of my biggest clients. I'm a, he's a long-term client. He's been with me a long time and he supports me. Uh, and Patty and Dean, uh, and, you know, after he ran, they've been, you know, they obviously want to be in the Derby. And uh, I'm blessed enough that I would have a situation where, you know, I could bring them here with me. And, you know, the other time when I ran the Derby with Tax, it was Dean and Randy, and I owned a piece of him. And uh, it's just one of those things when you are fortunate enough to bring the people that helped you get here along with you, it's a blessing. And I'm just excited that we can all do this together again, and uh, hopefully we keep doing it in the future together. Because they're big supporters of mine. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be trained, you know. Uh, Randy and Dean are probably the reason I started getting away from the claiming game and into, into two-year-olds. You know, because, you know, you have to have money to buy them. You have to have owners that will give you the opportunity. And, uh, you know, they've given me the money and the opportunity to get where I'm at. And it's, uh, I'm just happy and blessed with all my owners. You know, Vito's supported me a lot at the sales this year. Uh, Balmore Racing and those guys. So, you know, it's a big, you know, every one of them you need. West Paces, I've had, they have pieces of several horses with me. And uh, it's just, it takes a lot of luck. But Dean and Randy are the ones that kind of forced me to, not forced, but talked me into trying to play this route to get us in the situation. And, you know, we're back again, and uh, hopefully we can keep getting lucky and be here together again. So did Dean ask you, hey, Danny, will you sell part of your share? Or did he say, will you sell all of your share? <laughs> well, we talked about, you know, the horse was broke at his farm. Uh, Jimmy Gladwell the Glad and Nelly and them, they broke him. And he they always liked him at the farm. And, I, you know, Dean buys a lot of my horses if, if we like them. And, uh, he, uh, he inquired about him after he broke his maiden, and I said, well, I'm gonna run him back in the wood, and if he runs good, I'll sell him to you then. I said, "There's, let's see where he runs, and if he gets, you know, qualifies and can get the derby, I'll, you know, sell him to you then. So, he did. So, that's how that all came about. I'm assuming but, the price went up. Well, <laughs> Dean, Dean's Let's very, he's, he's a very generous person, and uh, like I said, he's, believe me, he didn't, uh, he, he, he's very generous, and uh, we're very pleased that he's uh, put us in a situation where we are and like I said, he's taken care of us for a long time. So we're just blessed him and Patty are here. And uh, this is a big thing for Patty. And I'm just, uh, she's a big supporter of mine, his wife. And uh, she's uh, does a lot of good things for me and helps me with a lot of things. And uh, yeah, just to have them come along, it's great for all of us. And uh, you opted for the Tory to ride Society Man? Yeah, I mean, uh, he, Frankie's made it known he wants to ride the Derby and we were lucky enough to get him. Uh, Took a little while, we had to wait, but uh, you know, you understand he's more, I'd have to say he's you know, one of the best riders of all time. He's uh, probably rode more 20 horse fields than anybody in the world that's riding in this race, because you know, he's Royal Ascot, they're 30 horse fields all day long. So we're just blessed to have him. It's gonna be fun and it's good for horse racing for Frankie to be here. You know, it's gonna be a lot of headlines. I think there's gonna be a Netflix thing 
they're coming to film him. There's a lot going on in Frankie's world, big. So uh, it's just good for Churchill Downs, good for racing to have a celebrity, because he's a celebrity, you know, in his country. You know, he's like a movie star. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun for everybody to have him here, I think. Can you imagine his famous flying dismount if at Churchill Downs for Saturday in May? I know. America's greatest race, if that would happen. Well, that yeah. But, you know, I remember as a kid watching uh, one of the first derbies I bet a winner, spend a buck, and Angel did the dismount. So, And Frankie came over and work, was with Angel as a kid some. And, uh, yeah, it's a great thing to see. And uh, hopefully we get to see it here on Derby Day one time. That would be for, pretty exciting. And, uh we're just happy that he's uh, going to be here all week and sharing it with us. With uh, Society Man, what uh, what did you see in the wood that makes you think that he can, you know, fits in this race? And... I've always been a little excited about him. I, I saw last fall when he was breezing with Doorknock, he was probably the only horse I had that could keep up with him and uh, stay with him working. And they were workmates going into the Remsen. And uh, I told a few people back then, I thought this horse could be somewhere in the if he gets lucky, we could get lucky. I ran him in as a maiden in the withers, thinking he might get on the derby trail then. And he kind of broke in a tangle and really never got a chance to get running. And then he come back out of that and broke his maiden really impressive and then ran in the woods. But when he, I'd say last December, late November, he started working after we gelded him like a serious horse. And uh, that's when I could see, you know, a change in him is after we gelded him and when he came back. And I said, oh, this horse can really run. So uh, I've been a little high on him since then, and it uh, just took a race or two to get him where he was. And how, how do you see, or I mean, how would you like to see Frankie ride him? Thank you. And uh, how would you like to see Frankie ride him in the Derby? Well, I'm not gonna tell Frankie how to yeah. ride. <laughs> I mean, do you think the horse is I haven't gonna... been riding lately. But uh, <laughs> no, we're gonna let Frankie, uh, you know, he'll watch the replays, he'll plan it out. He's tactical, he can break and sit. The other day, you know, he can sit back and make a big run. He can sit in mid pack and make a run. You know, he's not a speed horse, but you know, we'll let Frankie figure that out. And after the post position draw, you know, he's a master of winning a million races, so uh, we'll let him kind of figure out his route around there. And with Doorknock, I mean, you, you win the Remsen, so you're obviously thinking about the, the Derby all along. Um, you didn't really have him cranked for the first races in Florida, did you? Or how, what was the kind of game plan bringing him to this point? Well, I mean, I thought he was a Derby horse, and as a, before he ever ran, he's always trained like a good horse he looks like a good horse and i've been extremely high on him before he ever made his first start i told everybody he's the best horse i ever trained and i still think he is but uh you know it's we went down there with a the plan to run him twice before the derby and it we got the points in the first race and then we schooled him in the next one and the shipping and stuff so we're here and uh just got to hope for a clean trip and uh if he gets the right trip and he's talented he can win he can win any race at any time because he's got some talent, he's got some fight in him. We just don't want to get stuck down on the inside and get a nice clean trip. All right, good luck. Thank you. Sorry, I'm